Hey guys, Shane here. So in today's video, I'm gonna be going over what I consider to be the top eight side hustles that are paying the most money right now. Now I've been doing side hustles for years, like literally ever since I was about 12 years old, maybe even younger. And I've been looking at what other YouTubers are suggesting and honestly, most of the suggestions kinda suck. But if you watch this video and you really pay attention, I'm gonna share with you some side hustles today that are gonna make you some serious extra cash and they're also gonna stop you from just wasting your time you know, going down a road that's just not gonna get you anywhere. Okay, so take Uber for example. So a recent poll conducted on a really popular blog um, by this guy Campbell found that Uber drivers make about $15.68 an hour. And that might sound pretty good until you factor in expenses like gas, maintenance, and depreciation because then it goes down to about $9.21 an hour, which is just a little bit over minimum wage. So with that being said, chances are you probably shouldn't be wasting your time being an Uber driver. Instead, you should do my number eight suggestion, which is getting paid to be somebody's friend. Yes, you can get paid between 10 and $50 an hour using rentafriend.com. Now, before you go in the comments section and type, well, Shane, that's stupid. Nobody would ever pay $50 an hour just to be somebody's friend. Think about the last time you traveled somewhere. Think about all the time it took to plan it out, to figure out what restaurants you were gonna go to, to figure out what sites you were gonna see, you know, all the different things, you know, figure out what parts of town were the good parts of town that you really wanna go to and which ones do you kinda just wanna ignore. Chances are you ended up going somewhere at the wrong time, you probably ended up stuck in traffic, or even worse, you ended up looking ridiculous, you know, standing in a long line like those silly people who, you know, stand in line just to get the newest iPhone for like six hours. Ain't nobody got time for that. Now a really good example of this is Las Vegas. So I lived there for about three years and I could tell you exactly which spots are completely overrated and which ones are freaking awesome. So with this site, you can just basically hire someone to show you around the city, show you all the good spots, the good restaurants, etc. And it's basically just like having your own personal travel guide where you know it probably took them years and years to learn you know which spots were good and which ones sucked. And they will save you from going to different spots that are just really overrated, you know, maybe overpriced, or you have to wait in line, or it's just a waste of your time. That way you don't have to spend as much time researching and the whole experience is just a lot smoother and just a much better experience overall. And going back to my example of Las Vegas is just a perfect example of this because, you know, the casinos spend so much money making you think that their attraction is better than everything else. And a lot of the time, the really good attractions, there's just no way they can even compete with the casinos. And so nobody even knows about them. And there's a ton of really good spots that pretty much only the locals know about. And it would be tough to even find them online. And even the spots that people do know about, like, you know, the Las Vegas sign, a local could tell you when to go there so that you don't have to wait in line for an hour. So if you live in a city where, you know, you got a lot of tourists and you're familiar with the city, you can sign up for this site and you can make really, really good money just showing people around. So number seven on this list is going to be just being a golf caddy. And golf caddies can earn $100 to $200 a round, and sometimes that doesn't even include tips. And this is just when you're starting off. So basically what you do as a caddy is you just like carry around all of the golfer's stuff uh, during rounds and in between rounds. And then whenever a golfer needs something like, you know, he needs his balls or, or a, like a club, you know, you just hand it to the golfer, they'll ask you and you hand it to them. Now, it does help if you know which clubs are which, and it helps even more if you know which general clubs that you should use in different situations, because that would make the golfer's job just a lot easier. And honestly, that's pretty easy to learn. You could probably learn that in like an afternoon. Now, benefits to this include, you know, you really get a good workout and you get to spend time around awesome, successful people you know, like Tiger Woods. So it's really good for networking. That is one thing that is definitely underrated about being a caddy. And believe it or not, this can turn into a full-time gig. I mean, 
There are caddies who make over a million dollars a year like Jordan Spieth's caddy. Now you can get work as a caddy by visiting your local golf courses and uh, country clubs. And this is kind of seasonal, you know, you're probably not gonna find too much work in the winter and the fall. You're gonna get most of your work in the spring and the summer when they're out golfing all the time. Now number six on my list is going to be a package delivery driver for Amazon Flex. And you can make a lot of money with this. All you basically need is a vehicle that has, you know, quite a bit of space so that you can store packages inside of it. And it says right on Amazon Flex's website, you can make 18, you know, 18 to $25 an hour doing this. But one problem I see is that they limit you to only working about 12 hours a week. And it's pretty unpredictable. Uh, they need more drivers at certain times of the year. So obviously during, you know, the last three months of the year, you've got Christmas, the holiday season, they're gonna need more drivers and they're gonna give you more hours. And then even certain times of the week. So there's certain times of the week where more packages get delivered. So you're gonna get more work during those times of the week. But if you find yourself in the holiday season and you don't have, you know, much to do, you have a lot of extra time, this is something that you could sign up for and really make a lot of extra income. Now, if you're not getting enough hours with Amazon Flex, there are other opportunities out there that are very similar delivery services. Uh, one of them is called doorman.co. I haven't personally tried that one out, but you know, you could definitely try that one and they probably pay pretty similar to what Amazon Flex pays. Now, number five on the list is an amazing side hustle that I have personally done many times and that is moving and hauling stuff. So whenever somebody does something significant like moving or getting a new washer or getting a new couch or something like that, they need a truck or like a big van to move things from point A to point B. Now, a lot of the time, the big moving services will have like a minimum service payment with a minimum amount of hours and a minimum amount of movers that people have to uh, purchase in order to get a job. So people end up overpaying, like paying way more than what they need to for a job that should have taken about half the time, maybe even one fourth of the time. And this leaves a huge opportunity for you. Now you can just buy an old truck on Craigslist for like a thousand, two thousand bucks. And it also helps if you have a trailer. And then you just go on Craigslist and you'd either post an ad in the services and moving section, or you just look for people who already posted and they need help moving. Now, when I used to do this, I used to make about 50 to $80 an hour. But honestly, I just had like a small truck. I had a GMC Sonoma. And I had a friend who had a bigger truck, like an F-150, and then he also had a trailer, and he'd make a lot more money than me. Now, a similar job to this that you can make even more money from, which also requires a truck, is number four on the list, which is snow plowing. Now, this one requires kind of like a medium to a larger size truck. You probably can't do this with a smaller truck, but you can make absolute bank with this. I mean, I knew a guy who made over $40,000 in one winter just by snow plowing. And if you don't believe me about these numbers, hey, I don't blame you. Do your own research. Look on a site like plowsite.com. It's a forum where these guys talk about how much they make. And I mean, it, it's pretty obvious that they make good money and you just have to look on the forum. I don't really see any reason why they would lie about it. Now, this is obviously a seasonal business, so you can only do it a few months out of the year. This is also a business that probably is not going to work for you if you live in a city like San Diego and you haven't seen snow since 1967. Now, the way that you would find business doing this is you would just post on Craigslist and then you'd also just let people know by word of mouth that you are somebody who has a truck and you have a snow plow and you are down for business. Now, number three on this list is going to be being a seasonal house decorator or personal shopper. So there are a lot of rich people out there that want their houses decorated, but they don't want to actually spend the time to do it themselves. And this is kind of a seasonal job, so there aren't that many companies out there that actually do this full time. And many of these people are willing to pay over a thousand dollars just for you to, you know, set up their Christmas tree and decorate their house. 
And you can do this for Christmas, you can do it for Halloween, probably a few other holidays out there. And then you can also be a personal shopper for people and buy gifts for their friends and families so that they don't have to. And if you're one of the 13 people in the world that is extremely good at gift wrapping, then you can also get paid really good money to do that as well. No, but seriously, like I don't know how people get good at this. I've tried so many times and my gifts always look like they were wrapped by a drunken five-year-old. So number two on the list is a surprising one, which is garage sale hopping or thrifting. And a great quote by one of the greatest philosophers from our era, Macklemore is, one man's trash is another man's come up. Anyways, you can find amazing items at garage sales and thrift stores for pennies on the dollar. You know, antiques are great for making money. Uh, furniture is another really good one you can make a lot of money from if you have the room to store it. But honestly, there are a ton of options and the best place to go to figure out, you know, what the prices for things are is actually eBay's completed listings section. And you would just basically go there and then it would tell you what these items are actually going for on the market. Like what real people are actually buying and selling these items for on the market. And all you need for this is a phone and a laptop. Now a slightly different approach to doing this, if you live in a college town, is wait until the semester ends and then go around and look at lawns and look at you know different dumpsters that are around places where students live. And I know that dumpster diving probably sounds really gross to you, but I once found a fully functional flat screen TV that a guy that probably looks like this just threw away because he didn't have any need for it at the end of the semester. And then I looked up the price online and it would have costed me around $800 to buy it brand new. Thanks, Chad. Now, if you're too lazy to leave your bedroom and actually go out and search for things, then you can try number one on my list, which is flipping items online. And this can be an amazing side hustle if you actually have the cash flow to buy and sell things. You know, I've been doing this for a long, long time. And one thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that whoever you're dealing with they come to a place that's pretty near where you are so that you don't have to spend too much of your time traveling or spending money on gas. And this is really whether you're buying or selling. And the only time that you would go to them is if it's a really, really good deal and you just cannot pass it up. And then you want to have an estimated price worked out with them before you go to see them. And then once you see it, you can usually work them down a bit and then that way you can make a little bit of extra money. Now, Craigslist is not the only site you can do this on. You can also use sites like OfferUp, um, eBay, uh, you can use you know, Facebook Marketplace. There's a bunch of different sites that you can do this on. And you'll notice that different sites have different demographics and for some reason, people will value different things differently on these different sites. So an example of something that sells really well on eBay is keyboard buttons. Seriously, you can buy an old keyboard for like 20 bucks and then you sell each individual key on eBay for like five to $10. And I'll just list uh, some other items that I've had a lot of success with. So you've got like phones, game consoles, laptops, uh, bicycles, games for the game consoles, and uh, perfume was another really good one I had success with. The real trick here is to just think of different needs that people might have and what they're searching for online. You know, think about like uh, a car for instance. You might have a button or something that is that broke in your car and then you go online, you go on eBay and you search for that specific piece of the car. And people do this all the time where they will buy an entire car and then just sell out the individual parts and they make, you know, three to five times what the car was originally worth. So two big things here is you want to avoid any items that are in extremely competitive uh, niches. So an example of that would be like phone cases and stuff. Very, very competitive niche. And then you also want to avoid items that big companies can easily mass produce and sell because there is just no way that you can you know, sell more than a big company 
their prices are way lower, they have way more of it, they spend more on marketing, there's just no way that you can outsell them. All right, thank you so much for watching this video. I truly appreciate it. And I hope this gave some of you side hustlers out there some really good ideas on, you know, different things that you can do to either make some extra income or maybe even replace your full-time income. And I would really appreciate it if you would just like this video, subscribe, and uh, leave a comment down below telling me different side hustles that you've done, if you've tried any of the side hustles that I've suggested and what results you've gotten. And yeah, just let me know what I can do in order to improve these videos. I genuinely appreciate it and uh, thanks and bye for now.